Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video we're going to take a look at all the Microsoft Form announcements that were made for the month of June 2024. And there were three awesome ones. So the first one was the availability of Copilot to build quizzes. Second one is to validate all questions that are of type text. And third is to share and collaborate, i.e. co-authoring. So stick around. These are three awesome features that I'm going to demonstrate just for you. But first, here's my intro video. So let me start by proving it to you that the Copilot feature was not available for quiz. In this video, which was released back in March, I show you the Copilot for forms, but when I go into quiz, you do not see Copilot over there. But now that it has released, let me show you how it works. So I'm in my personal tenant in Microsoft Form Services, and now I go and click on New Quiz, and voila, I see this option where Copilot is now going to assist me to build my quiz. And this is where I go and put in my description, which is basically the prompt. And you know what, to make it easier for me, I went into Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I just asked this simple question. I said, I need 10 questions to quiz a fifth grader with math. And these are the questions that it came up with. So all I did was basically highlight it all, do a control C, go back into my Microsoft Forms, and right over here where it says describe details, I literally did a control V, which is to paste it, and now I select on generate. That is all that I did. And so now it is creating the draft, it is finalizing the questions and the option that's saying, hey, we are almost there, and voila, look at what it is doing first of all, right? And it's happening really fast, but let's understand what it is doing. It first took all the 10 questions that we have, which is awesome. So here it finished all 10 of them, but let's scroll up and actually process all the awesomeness that it has done for us. First of all, it went and put in the question. So this one over here, see what is the value of seven times eight? Right over here, what is the value of seven times eight? But not only did it add the question, it also went and labeled which is the correct one, which is 56. But guess what? It also went in and added three other fake answers. Copilot did that automatically for you. You did not have to come over here and try to think through, oh, what are the other three fake ones that I need to go and put? And then coming over here, you didn't have to go and select any of the correct ones. No, it did that not just for one, but for all the other ones that it matched. I mean, look over here. This question for number four, and just to be clear, if you go to Copilot for 365, the question was, if a rectangle has a length of 10 units and a width of five units, what is its area? It was just one line text over here. But Copilot took that, processed it, gave me what is the correct answer, and it also went and gave me the units. Because let's face it, it's in units, because let's face it, units time units is square units. It thought through all of that and put that in as, again, one correct answer and then three other fake ones. I mean, this is mind blowing. Think of all you school teachers who are gonna leverage this. This is gonna save you so much of time. And if you scroll down over here, you can see some other ways as well. So for example, this question number seven, all right? And just to be clear, the question number seven was, if you buy three pencils for 50 cents each, how much change will you get for a $5 bill, all right? Pretty good question. When I come to my Microsoft Forms, it's the exact same thing. If you buy three pencils for 50 cents each, how much change will you get for a $5 bill? The answer, the correct answer, it knows is $3.50, but it's giving you the option to go and now put in an answer. Pretty awesome, right? And for just like number seven, if you go scrolling down, you have similar ideas over here. I'm blown out of my mind how awesome, effective, and easy to use building a quiz is. But you know what, I thought I'd take it to the next level. Just for grins and giggles, I went to now ChatGPT and I asked this prompt. I said, a set of questions to quiz a fifth grader math questions. And here are all the combinations of the different math that it gave me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and just highlight all of this, right? Arithmetic, fractions, decibels, geometry, word problems, the whole thing. I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna highlight that, do a control C, and now let's see how the Copilot in Microsoft Forms really performs. So we come back over here, click on new quiz. In my new quiz where it's asking for the details, I'm literally gonna do a control V, copied everything that I just got from ChatGPT. I'm gonna go and click on generate, and let's see what happens. 
All right, so it already got done analyzing it. Now it is going and drafting it, all right? So these are all the questions and the answers that are coming in. And it's the exact same thing as I showed before. It not only goes ahead and gives you which is the correct one, it also goes and creates three other fake ones. But check this out, it is just building and building. Right now we are at 10, but it's keep going, keep going. It's keep building it, which means all of these ones over here, right? 20 of them, right down to the word problems. It is going to go ahead and build all of them. We are at 19. Voila, it finished all 20 of them. Does this not blow your mind? Does this not make your job, especially as a school teacher, a lot more easier? Because I tell you what, it definitely blows my mind. The next new feature, which is Validate Open Text, may not sound very impressive upfront, but listen to me. For example, in this Microsoft form, we've got actually some text, some single line of text type responses. And right over here, as I scroll down, you will see this particular one. It says, what is the code of your department? And it's also giving you some examples because this is gonna be a code number. Example, 007, all right? So the answer that we are expecting is a numerical value, but you know there is always that one person who has not read this correctly and will put in a text. Well, how do we stop this in Microsoft Forms? Because if you're familiar with Canvas apps, it is easy over there, but it was impossible to do this in Microsoft Forms before, but, but now we can. So let me show you. I'm gonna click on this question, and in the ellipses, I'm gonna click on that, and now you have restrictions. And when I click on restrictions, the first option it actually says is number is number. Basically, we are restricting the answer to this question of a type number. It can only be of a type number. So I'm gonna leave this one over here because that's very good. Next, let's go down to this one. Is that provide your email address. Same thing, I'm gonna click on that, click on the ellipses, go to restrictions, and in the restrictions, I'm gonna specifically say this is gonna be of type email. And while I'm here, let me show you the other options. You see, if somebody was asking you, your blog URL, well, you can restrict this answer of a type URL. So you see the awesomeness over here? Because now you can make sure the users are giving you specific answers, but out of the box, you have all of these functionalities. Also, also, right over here, okay, in this example, how was your experience at this event? When I go and click on that, I'll go and say that, hey, I do wanna put in a restriction, but specifically for the text, I want to make sure that it contains experience, all right? And it even updates the hint. It says, please enter text that contains experience. So now users will say, hey, here was my experience all the way around. And as a last example, see this one over here? What did you like most about the event? You know that there were only two different types of single line of text. You know that there were only two different types of open text. There was either the one line or the long answer. However, now you can restrict it at a much more granular level. Again, let's click on the ellipses click on restrictions, and on that length, you can say what the minimum or the maximum count should be. So in my case, I'm gonna make sure that the maximum count doesn't go more than 3,000 characters. But let's test this, all right? So I'm gonna go over here to my preview, and let me scroll down to find specifically those single line of text ones. All right, right here, it says, what did you like most about the event? Here is my full description. I actually used ChatGPT to make that. And right over here, it says, hey, please enter at most 3,000 characters. Now, I could go and change that to say 300 characters, and that way I can go and put the limit. So this one worked. Next, how was your experience at this event? And this is the answer where we wanted the text to contain the word experience. Now, I didn't put in any limits on how many characters, so I'll go and paste the exact same thing. And I didn't get any errors, why? Because right on the first line it has, it was an experience. So it goes ahead and accepts that. But, but if I just go and say something like this, I liked the event, all right? Right now it's saying, hey, please enter text that contains experience, giving users a little hint that, hey, we want a little bit more information specifically about your experience. And then the last two is, what is the code of your department? If I am that person who did not look at the hint and I just went ahead and typed in IT, the hint I'm getting is, hey, the value must be of a type number. So then I can go and change that to, one, two, three, four, or something like that. And then last, but definitely not the least, is provide your email address. Well, in that case, again, I didn't pay attention to the email address and I just went and put in as Daniel Christian. It says, hey, please enter an email. So in my case, oh, okay, it's an email, which means I just come in, change it to danielchristian at contoso.com, and now that error goes away. So you see the beauty of how this validation text works? 
It is awesome and it gives you the flexibility to even tweak things around, which in our case was the total number of characters. Now the last, but definitely not the least, is the share form for collaboration. And this is awesome for those scenarios where you have to actually build a form, but you wanna share that across a few people so that each of them can focus on some sections of the form, but work on it at the same time. So here's an example, all right? I have a monthly potluck event type of a form that I wanna build, but I only wanna focus on some specific questions over here. I wanna share it with two other people. And guess what? One of that person is in my tenant and the other one is outside my tenant. And yes, we can collaborate that way as well. So let me show you an example. This is my Microsoft form for the monthly potluck event. I'm gonna go to the ellipses on the top right, click on collaborate and duplicate. And right over here, I'm just gonna say, share the link to collaborate and view result. So I selected, the link has been created. Now I can go and click on copy. And just to make sure you see what's going on, I'll go and make this one a little smaller. And here's the next one. This is Finn Christian, Finn's my dog. Um, his account is part of my tenant over here. So I'll just open up another tab. I'll go and paste it, the link which I just got over here, this copied. I'll go and click on enter. And the moment I do that, you see what happened over here? It shows now that Finn is also in the editing phase. So cool, I can go ahead and focus on one section of the form. Finn can go and make sure that even pets get some food. But, but let's take it to that last level, is do it on somebody else's tenant. And for that, here is my other window. In this case, I have Adele. Adele is part of a completely separate tenant. So even here, I'm gonna open up another tab, paste that exact same link, and now you'll see it is going ahead and loading, and voila, on the top, it is actually showing all of them. And voila, now for all three of them, you can see that there are a total of three people that are working on it. And it also depends on where you're seeing, because over here in my account, you see that it is Finn and Adele. In Finn's account, it shows it is Daniel and Adele, and then Adele's account, it shows Daniel and Finn. So it really does a really good job on the collaboration piece. And now we can all go and work on different things. So if I were to go ahead and now create my first question and just call that as question one, if I now go and take a look at what Finn's is, Finn immediately sees what that question was created. Same thing even for Adele. Even though Adele is of, of a completely separate tenant, they are able to see what each of them is doing. Now I know what you're thinking. So Daniel, what if I'm done collaboration? Can I go ahead and retract that access? And the answer to that is yes. What I can do is now come back over here to the original person, which was me who did the sharing, click on that ellipsis, go to the collaborate one, and you see right over here, click on delete. And we can click on that remove link, and it is done just like that. So if I now go back to my Finn one over here, and if I go and do a refresh, it says, sorry, something went wrong. Make sure you have permission to access this form. And just as test, if I go now to Adele one, and if I go and refresh it, Adele sees the exact same thing. So it's pretty neat because you can go and give the access and you can go ahead and restrict it as well. Now I can already see myself use this specifically for those scenarios where the form does need a little extra work. It's not just a very simple form that I can go and build in 30 minutes. It's the type of the form where we've got to think together what those questions are gonna be. And so in that case, this collaboration will really help me make those effective forms. And there you have it, three spectacular new features released in Microsoft Forms in the month of June, 2024. And I know, using Copilot to build quizzes is the icing on the cake. But hey, the validation of the open text and the share and collaboration is pretty awesome as well. And I'm pretty sure that once you take a look at that, you will find use cases too. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully you get excited to start leveraging it. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.